What if I tell you that this one slider, it will completely change your images. You will make them pop, you will make them stand out, it will bring life into them. Look at the skin tones in this image, just by moving this one slider to the right, we are improving it, we are making it glow, make it stand out. And this is Camera Calibration and Lightroom Classic. This is a little known trick that uh, a lot of landscape and portrait and wedding photographers are using. And I'm going to teach you today how to use it and what is it good for. I put my camera calibration here right under my main um, sliders into Lightroom because this is the order I will edit my images. First I will adjust my exposure and so on and then I work with camera calibration. Now camera calibration it has red, green and blue. This is the colors that make any color onto your images on your screen. I'm going to take a different image and demonstrate how these sliders work and you will be amazed to see the results you can get from it. I am going to take, let's say I need something that has a sky. We'll take this image. I'll go into develop and I'm not doing any edits to this image. I will just go into the camera calibration. Now in the camera calibration, we have the three primary colors. We have red, we have green and blue. This is the colors that make up all your colors onto your digital images on the computer. And notice this, when I move, let's just move the, let's move the hue. Let's move the hue of the reds. If I move it to the left, it changes the reds into pinks. If I move it to the right, it changes it into oranges, right? We kind of expected that. But what is different about the camera calibration versus the HSL panel is when you alter one of these colors, it changes all the colors, not just that one color. For example, if I am here into the calibration and I'm going into the blues, I am not going to change any of these hues. I am just going to move the saturation of the blues all the way to 100. And bam, just like that, this is the before, this is the after. The blues, of course, it's super saturated. We can bring down the saturation on that, but look at the skin tones of our model here. Look at the before, look at the after. You see how it's glowing. It has these beautiful, beautiful tones. And this is achieved with the camera calibration. Now, we went all the way to 100. You don't have to go to 100, but then if you feel your blues are too saturated, we can, of course, go into the HSL and go into the saturation and take your blues down a little bit but your skin tones still remain glowing and beautiful. This is the before, this is the after. Before and after, with just those two sliders, we really improve this image. Now, this is the saturation slider, and I use this one pretty much in most of my images. It's just the saturation of the blue, but we can do so much more with it. I'm going to reset this. We can, we saw that if we move the red hue to the right, it will give us orange. Now the skin looks too orange, so I can reduce the saturation a little bit, something like that. And then I can change the hue of the blue into cyan. And there you go. Now we got that Instagram famous, you know, cyan and orange, you know, presets that you see them all the time. And just like that, with two sliders, we created this new look. This is the before, this is the after. Most of the time though, you will find yourself mostly working with the saturation of the blue. I feel like this one just gives beautiful, beautiful tones. And it's not just for portraits, it's for pretty much any photo. I'm going to show you a couple of different examples. And let's say this image over here. If I go to develop and I will only move that saturation of the blue slider, there you go. It just made the image pop. It altered the, the luminance, it altered the colors, the vibrance in it. It's just beautiful. This is the before, this is the after. I'm going to take a different example and then I will show you something else as well. Let's see this autumn leaves because autumn, it is coming, believe it or not. And there you go, increase the saturation a little bit and they're just popping. This is the before, this is the after. Let's go take one more example maybe. What can we do these leaves? They pretty much, you will think they have no blue in them. But look when I move the saturation of the blue all the way to the right, they are becoming more bright, they are more vibrant, they just get some life into it. Um, I'm going to show you, let's do, let's do this couple of more and then I'll show you a little trick I like to do with my flower photography. And this image over here, I will do the same thing, just the blue saturation all the way to the right and look at that, we're getting that sun-kissed look and all the highlights. 
this is the before this is the after this is the before and after let's take one more and then i'll show you that cool trick we have another autumn photo here and if i go to develop increase the saturation of the blue and there you go this is just beautiful this is the before a little bit dull and after before and after now let me show you that trick that i told you about i have to find i have a flower photo here let's see i have this one and i can go into the camera calibration and here i will move the hues i'm not gonna mess with the saturation i'll just play with the hues i'll move the hue of the blue towards cyan and that is not looking so great right but then i'll take the hue of the reds and move them into orange now we're looking better what happens if I move the hue of the green towards yellow? Now we have blue flowers and just like that, we completely transform this image. This is the before, this is the after, before and after. Yes, it's not realistic, but it's really, really pleasant result. I really like doing this and I do that to a lot of my flower photos. Let's go back to check the skin tones. I do think that this uh, camera calibration helps so much with skin tones. This is a close up of a portrait. Increasing the saturation of the blue makes that skin glow. This is the before, this is the after. With just that one slider. I really like the way it reacts with this uh, librarian here. If I go to develop and move it to the right there you go look at the skin tones look at the hair look at the books on the shelves this is the before this is the after and that is just moving one slider nothing else to it i am going to give you let's try maybe one more example what can we do here we'll take this autumn image of a family strolling through the park moving the saturation to the right there you go they are just standing out and of course we are putting if we're putting a vignetting around, that will even make this image even better. Let's see. Can I find my vignette tool over here on the bottom? Bring it in a little bit. Feather it. And there you go. This is our before and after just like that. Let's see if we can take one more example. Let's mess around with this butterfly. What can we do with this one? I'm um, going to go back to camera calibration. Should we change some hues? If we move the, the blue towards cyan, look at the hue of the butterfly. We can pretty much change it through all the colors of the rainbows. And what I like about this, my green leaves is kind of staying green. So without making a selection, I can just change the color of this butterfly. This is the before, this is the after. What if I, if I change the hues on the greens? The greens on the leaf is changing, but also the color of the butterfly. I'm gonna reset that. How about the hue of the red? Little small changes, but just like that, we can make some really creative decisions into our edits and completely transform images. This is pretty much all I wanted to show you. The camera calibration, if you have not played with it before, please do go and experiment. I'm sure you can create some amazing photos using these tricks. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Kyla Ewing and I'll see you in my next video.